In Crime Watch tonight, enforcement action on trafficking of women into Singapore to work as prostitutes. And police break up a counterfeit syndicate. Welcome to another episode of Crime Watch. I'm DSP Julius Lim. On the 6th of August 2008, two women, both Chinese nationals, made a police report claiming that they had been cheated by two men to come to Singapore. However, police officers uncovered something entirely different. They were all involved in prostitution activities. One of the girls was also under the age of 18 and therefore considered a minor. On the 6th of August 2008, Police from the nearby Geelong NPC responded to a call for help. Wang Minjiao, a 36-year-old Chinese national, was shocked to see the police officers and the two women at his doorstep. Nevertheless, he was cooperative. A check of their passports revealed the group had arrived in Singapore on the 31st of July, 2008, on social passes. Wang Minjiang tried to explain his way out, that he and his nephew had come to Singapore to work. As for the women, Wang Minjiang could not provide a good explanation. From the passports, the officers discovered that one of the two women, Wang Peiying, was only 17 years of age. The officers suspected there could be more going on and decided to refer the case to CID. Senior investigating officer Vince Yeo from the Specialized Crime Division, CID, was placed in charge of the case. Wang Peiying? Sure. You saw you were killed in Singapore? Yes. Wang 工作,你做什麼工? Wang Peiying finally told I.O. Vince Yeo the real purpose of their visit to Singapore was to make money through prostitution. In在中國付了一個叫李先生的人 to pacify the girls, Wang Minjiang moved their operation to a coffee shop. But the girls couldn't get used to that too. Her companion, 19-year-old Chai Yu Mei, corroborated Wang Peiying's statement. They arrived in Singapore on the 31st of July and shortly after that began soliciting sexual services to men on the streets of Gela. As Huang Peiying and Chai Yu Mei were both victims of trafficking, they were referred to shelter homes while the case was under investigation. Huang Minjiang. I.O. Vince next interviewed Wang Minjiang. 
Wang Minjiang said he had been asked by a Mr. Lee in China to pay for the girls' airfare to Singapore and to take care of their lodging and expenses during their stay here. In return, the girls had to pay him $100 each from their earnings every day. Min Chiang not only knew Huang Peiying was 17, he was using that as a value add to entice other men to engage her services. Yi 還有任何人靠這些賣淫所賺來的錢生活也是犯法的。Both men were arrested for bringing women into Singapore for the purpose of prostitution with common intention and other vice related offenses. But the police investigation did not end here. Find out more after the break. Oh, Vince next turned his investigation on Wang Peiying's clients. Reason being, under Section 376B of the Penal Code, it's an offence for anyone to have commercial sex with minors under 18. Wang Peiying gave investigating officers the contact number of one of her clients, a man called Rodney Sim. Mr. Rodney Sim, do you know this woman? No. Then why is it she has your contact number? I don't know her name. I just call her Xiaomi. So do you engage her for sexual services? Yes. So you gave her your handphone number? Yes. She told me she didn't like it here. She wanted to go back, but she didn't have the passport. Did you help her? Yes. I met up with her, with another girl, and I drove them to Chinese embassy. And the embassy people asked them to make a police report. After that, I sent them back, and I left. I was trying to help. I didn't do anything wrong. But it is an offence to pay for sex with someone under the age of 18. I do not know that. I old Vince tried to find the rest of the offenders. He asked Huang Peiying to take them to the hotels where her clients had brought her for sexual services. It was a challenging task because it required the cooperation and memory of Wang Peiying to recall the exact time and rooms her clients had brought her to. After checking numerous hotels and verifying with hotel guest records, I.O. Vince managed to find a possible match. A man by the name of Tan Chai Hin. From the records, they were subsequently able to obtain a photo of Tan Chai Hin. Both Wang Peiying and Wang Minjiang were able to identify him as one of their clients. Tan Chai Hin subsequently admitted to engaging her for sexual services on the 4th of August 2008 for $100. On 27th August 2008, both Rodney Sim and Tan Chai Hin were arrested and charged with commercially obtaining sexual services of a person who is under 18 years of age. Rodney Sim was subsequently convicted and sentenced to 12 months imprisonment. 
Han Chai Hien was convicted and sentenced to nine months imprisonment. Wang Minqiang was charged with three counts under vice-related offences, including bringing women into Singapore for the purpose of prostitution with common intention, and sentenced to 17 months imprisonment and fined $17,000. His nephew Wang Yu Yi was charged with three counts under vice-related offences and fined $17,000. Huang Peiying and Chai Yumei returned to China upon completion of the case. Whether in Singapore or outside the country, it's an offence to have commercial sex with minors under the age of 18. It's also an offence to bring women into Singapore or harbour women for the purpose of prostitution. These, together with the earlier commercial sex case with a minor, may constitute sex trafficking. If you come across any victims of sex trafficking, call the police. These are serious crimes against persons. The police will not hesitate to take the offenders to task and face the full extent of the law. After the break, police cracked down on a counterfeit syndicate. In August last year, police received seven reports about counterfeit Singapore bills. The counterfeit notes were used for payment to taxi drivers, at convenience stores, food courts, mobile phone shops, and a sundry stall. Our next story shows how police tracked down a group of people involved in passing off fake money. Akira tells me you want to make some fast money. So what's the deal? I have $20,000 of this. I'll give you all of it. You give me back $5,000, real money. They're all the same numbers? Yeah. OK, deal. Good. Akira, I'll fix the next meeting. I'll pass you the money there. The notes, all bearing the same number, were supplied by Ng Zhu Ren. Akira arranged for Ng Zuren and Raza to meet again. This time for Ng to pass Raza the counterfeit bills amounting to $20,000. So, all $50 notes. Remember to pay me back the $5,000? Real money. No problem. In exchange for real money, Raza would have to spend his counterfeit bills as quickly as possible. To do this, he would have to recruit others to help him out. Hey, hey, what's up? One of them was Mohammed Shahrul. So you interested? How much do I get? For every 50 they use, just pay me 30. And the rest, you can keep. I see what I can do about it. Hey, hey. What's up, man? Unsure about spending the counterfeit money, Shahrul turned to a friend, Law Mohammed Siddiq. Sheila. Hey bro, this is fake money, right? Hey, if you get caught, it won't be a joking matter, you know. Better not use it. Tell you what, why don't you give me the money? Although Siddiq had told his friend not to use the counterfeit money as it was illegal, he himself couldn't resist the temptation in the end. Hey guys, I think as for now, I think it's still too early. Eh? Hey, come to my place, guys. Uh, uh, I'm going to your place, wow. Hey, wait, wait, wait. How about we go Sentosa? Okay. Okay, okay. Cool, huh? Okay, go get the tickets. You guys sit here. Six hundred yes. Sentosa. Uh, that'll be eighteen dollars. Here you go. Thanks. 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 Hey, hey, come back. Hey. It wasn't a long time before the ticketing officer realized that someone had paid with a counterfeit note. This is definitely a counterfeit. I think I better call the police. I also remember that there was only one person who paid with $50. Can you describe him, please? Um, he was a Malay guy in his 20s. Uh, well, he had a tattoo on his neck and on his forehead. 
And uh, I also remember that he was wearing a black cap. Do you happen to have some CCTV at your counter, maybe? Yeah, sure we do. We got uh, one over there and one on that side. From the CCTV recordings, I also Hardy found the suspect who fitted the description given. Tattoos, black cap, and a fifty-dollar bill. Looks like this is the guy we're looking for. Let's inform all land divisions to look out for this guy. Checks revealed that the counterfeit note shared the same serial number with another counterfeit note that was recovered about a week ago, used by a taxi passenger picked up at Telok Blanga Crescent. Great World City. Great World City, eh? Okay. Uncle, I only got $50. You got chain? Oh, no problem. This is $50, huh? Okay. $45. Thank you. See you again. Thank you. It was only when the taxi driver started counting his day's earnings that he noticed he had been given a $50 counterfeit note. He immediately made a police report. Believing that the same culprit was responsible for the two counterfeit cases, police stepped up patrols in Teloblanga Estate in search of the suspect. Ambushes and inquiries were also carried out around Teloplanga Crescent, where Raza had boarded the taxi. Suspecting that the passenger could be the culprit, I O Suhadi and his officer intercepted the driver. We're actually investigating a counterfeit currency case. Can I just check with you the money that your passenger just paid you? Okay, no problem. Okay, Uncle. Thanks, sir. Sorry, because right now there's counterfeit currency in circulation. So when you uh, when your passenger pay you, you just be extra careful. Yeah, okay. yeah, man. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you, Uncle. Thanks. The ambushes were carried out over a few days. Ayo Suhadi was sure the culprit would surface again. And he was right. Okay, guys, listen up. The suspect is seen under block 11 wearing the same black cap, long sleeve, green t shirt. Let's go. Police. What's your name? Sine. Come step aside. Right. We are investigating a case of counterfeit currency now. With a brief conversation with Siddiq, Ayo Suhadi was able to quickly size up that Siddiq was involved in the use of counterfeit money. It's fake money, sir. Siddiq, we are placing you under arrest for using counterfeit currency. So where did you get this counterfeit currency from? From my friend Sharul, sir. My friend Raza gave it to me. It wasn't long before Raza too was arrested. He admitted to using the money to pay the taxi driver. Did you print the money? No. No. I got the money from Alex. My friend Akira introduced me to him. Alex's name is Ng Zirang. The money came from him. Where can we find Ng Zirang? Police tracked down Ng Zuren's last known address, but he had fled. Raza Iskanda was sentenced to four years imprisonment for using as genuine counterfeit currency notes. Akira Ong was sentenced to three years imprisonment for abetment by conspiracy to use as genuine counterfeit currency notes. 31-year-old Ng Zhu Ren, also known as Alex Ng, a Singapore citizen, is still at large. He last resided at Block 749 Jurong West Street 73. Police are appealing for your help. If you have any information as to the whereabouts of Ng Zhu Ren, please contact the police hotline at 1-800-255-0000. All information will be kept strictly confidential. Lo Mohammed Siddiq was sentenced to three years imprisonment for using as genuine counterfeit currency notes. He's currently serving his sentence at Changi Prison. He's remorseful and has bravely shared his story. Tu itu saya ada hadapi masalah kewangan dan pribadi. 
saya rasa terdesak untuk gunakan duit palsu itu. Saya rasa takut juga. Rasa macam 50-50. Tak tahu boleh lepas ke tidak. Dalam penjara, saya fikir balik perbuatan saya salah. Saya menyesal. Saya ingin nasihatkan mereka, jangan sekali-kali cuba gunakan duit palsu. Sebab salah dari segi undang-undang dan hukumannya berat. Counterfeiting currency is a serious offence under the penal code. It carries an imprisonment term which may extend to 20 years. The punishment for using counterfeit currency is the same. For possession of counterfeit currency, the imprisonment term may extend up to 15 years. For the rest of us, how can we differentiate between genuine and counterfeit notes and avoid falling victim to such ploys? It turns out that there are three basic steps to determine the authenticity of a note. First, look at the note. Make sure there is a watermark, which is an image of a president, and a security thread running down the center of the note. Next, feel the note. A genuine note will feel crisp, while counterfeits often feel greasy or waxy. Genuine notes are also embossed, so certain areas of the note will feel raised. These are the image of the president, the denomination, and the Singapore coat of arms. Finally, tilt the note. When tilted, the kinogram transforms into different images. If you are to receive a counterfeit note, and if you know that it is a counterfeit note, it is your duty and responsibility to hand it over to the police. The police will then conduct investigations and have the culprit apprehended so that people won't be fooled by these counterfeit notes. Retailers and shop owners are also reminded to be vigilant at all times and to take note of the following measures. CCTVs should be strategically positioned over the cashier counter to capture the image of customers. During peak hours, cashiers should be wary during change of larger notes. If you happen to receive a counterfeit note, do not return the suspected note. Delay and keep the suspect in sight and if possible, contact the police immediately. Take note of the description of the culprit. Note the suspect's mode of escape and take down the vehicle registration number if he or she had escaped in the vehicle. Minimize the handling of the note and carefully place it in an envelope or polymer bag and hand it to the police when they arrive. We've come to the end of another episode of Crime Watch. If you have any query or feedback, do drop us an email. Until next month, I'm DSP Julius Lim, signing off.